What's going on guys, it's your boy The Cash Critic and welcome to my new series, Streaming and Chill, What to Watch This Weekend with The Cash Critic. So thank you so much for tuning in. Pretty much just a quick overview of what's going to go on is that I'm going to be going over four streaming platforms with you guys and then at the end I'll also be going over the Nielsen charts with you which shows the top 10 actual shows and or movies that are most popular in the United States specifically. But I'm also from the streaming platforms themselves. I'm going to give you my personal top five picks of what to watch, additionally with a hidden gem that I think not so many people have seen or just a refresher for people to actually go ahead and watch. And hopefully you pick up some new shows to watch and something to watch on the weekend, whether it's with your friends, your family, a significant other, and have a great time doing so as we'll be running this weekly and we'll go from there and make further improvements as well. So as always, guys, be sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe button down below, share it with a friend, guys. Let's just jump right into it. And as always, want to give you a heads up, drop a comment down below too. Give me some feedback. I'm always open to constructive criticism, and that way we can improve it, and you guys can continue on the journey with me as well. Now, for segment number one, bam, right on the screen, right? We have Netflix, my top five. So the very first one, we have Outer Banks Season 3. This was just released February 23rd and has had so much buildup and anticipation to the season. It is blowing the charts off of Netflix. So absolutely something you'd want to watch if you haven't already. Now, some people view this more as a teenager slash kid kind of show. However, I've been watching this since the pandemic and have been hooked on ever since. So for people that don't know what it's what it is, more of a treasure kind of hunt adventure kind of show uh given like an indiana jones and mummy type of vibe all at once and definitely something that you will want to get into if that's what you're into now for the second option that i have listed here is red rose this was released actually on february 15th however it has been doing fairly well compared to other shows on netflix it definitely is a psychiatric kind of horror series with dark tones and twist to uh, each episode. Uh, Red Rose is actually the name of an app that these group of teenagers in the United Kingdom download and it pretty much goes downhill from there. Now it's definitely worth checking out if you are into like that horror and psychiatric type of thriller show uh, because it absolutely is crazy. And unlike Outer Banks, it doesn't give that sense of a kid show, even though it revolves around like an older group of teens that just graduated from high school. So definitely something to check out if you haven't done so already. Um, and I highly recommend it as well. Now for option number three, the Murdoch murders, a Southern scandal, right? So this was just released on February 22nd, and it is a three part series. So right off the gate, I'm sure many of you know the story of the Murdoch family or at least heard of this horrific uh, tragedy. So you know this is a true crime type of documentary. And it's a very sad story at that as well. So not something you'd want to watch with your children of younger age per se either. So absolutely worth checking out as the story till this day is still actually being uncovered as well. So if you're into those kind of true crime documentaries um, and it's short, right? It's only three episodes, definitely worth your while to check out too. Now for option number four, we have Sex Life Season 2. Now this is highly anticipated show as well. It was just released yesterday, March 2nd. So if you've been waiting for Season 2, you can go ahead and binge watch it now. Literally, it's as spicy and sexually driven as ever. The best part about it as well is that the two main characters, Adam DeMose and uh, Sarah Shahi, are actually partners in real life, which is also why they are so comfortable on the uh, the set itself, which really gives those really big impactful moments on the big screen. And then option number five, I have We Have a Ghost. Now, this is actually a movie that was just released on February 24th, where a ghost is actually haunting this family's home. But as the family member tries to uncover uh, the ghost past, the CIA actually ultimately end up getting involved as well. So this is an absolutely great cast, guys. Literally, uh, as uh, David Harbour is the ghost himself, there's Jennifer Coolidge, Anthony Mackie, uh, Jahi Diallo, Winston, and more. So you are definitely in for laughs and some drama as well. So it's, this is kind of more of like a comedy-based uh, movie too. So don't think it is scary. Uh, it might even be a great family movie to go ahead, sit down on the couch, stay in on a Friday night, get the popcorn going, and enjoy a great film too. Now, I know you guys can already see it on the screen. However, my hidden gem is Jung 
E. Now, Jung E, so this film was actually released a little while back on January 20th, and it is actually a South Korean film. The film itself is a very sci-fi with futuristic aspects as it takes place in the 22nd century, uh, where Earth is not even had will due to climate change. Now, although you may need subtitles for this film or just change the language over to English, it's definitely worth checking out as I had a ton of fun watching it myself, and if you're into that sci-fi fantasy type of show, I definitely would recommend watching this because I think it's absolutely stellar. Alrighty, now on to segment number two. We have, boom, look at that, HBO Max, right? So HBO Max is hands down my favorite streaming platform. Teach their own, right? I know people are very indifferent about that. But option number one, we have The Last of Us. Of course, I had to put this on the list as it was released on January 15th. And with episode eight coming out this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern time, um, it has been one of the most watched shows on streaming platforms since its release, right? So obviously with Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey in the main roles, the cast on every episode, whether new or returning faces, have been absolutely fantastic, guys. So for those that actually don't know, this is actually based entirely off of the same story from The Last of Us, the video game that came out back in 2013. So without giving anything away, I suggest for anyone that hasn't tuned in, and likes the post-apocalyptic movies or shows, this is definitely for you. Now, option number two is why I put on here is Succession Seasons 1 through 3. Now, this first premiered back in 2018 and has been an absolute stellar show since then. With Season 4 pretty much coming out on March 26th, this actually gives plenty of time for people to catch up or at least rewatch Season 3 uh, for a refresher. But if you are new, maybe you can binge watch them all to the lead up of March 26. Now with Brian Cox back in the saddle and being almost the main face of the uh, show itself, you can definitely expect fireworks. So if you're into the family drama and suspense, this show will keep you entertained and on your toes as they are the, one of the most powerful families in the entertainment business in this show. So just keep that in mind. It's a great, great show. Now, The White Lotus seasons one through two. Of course, I had to put this on the list. This is obviously one of the most watched shows on HBO Max itself. Also an Emmy winning show itself as well too. Season two just wrapped up. So definitely gives you plenty of time to catch up as season three has yet to officially been announced, but pretty much it's a given. It'll be back sometime late this year or most likely early next year, right? So uh, the cast is spectacular from both seasons and with Jennifer Coolidge uh, actually being the only cast member to return for season two, which was interesting. There's suspense, twists and turns, a ton of subliminal messages from beginning to end. This was absolutely uh, one of the shows that lived up to a type and definitely something that everyone should be checking out for my personal opinion. Now, House Party, which is a movie. This was just released today, guys. So make sure to tune in, watch it on HBO Max. So if you're looking for something new, this is your Friday night movie, your Saturday night movie, maybe your Sunday night movie or whatever day you want it to be, right? If you haven't already seen it, at least in theaters, right? So it's a comedy, party-driven, fun and chaotic kind of film where just two house cleaners end up being assigned to clean uh, LeBron James' house while he's overseas. And you can pretty much think of uh, what happens next from there since the name of the uh, film itself is called House Party. A lot of special guests, a lot of familiar faces you will see in the movie throughout. Uh, so it's a good time. So definitely check it out. Now, for option number five on HBO Max, I have Creed and Creed 2. Now, I felt as though this is something that you would absolutely want to watch as Creed 3 literally just released in theaters today as well. Um, now, of course, these films are not new. However, uh, the story behind it, the writing, and just the acting and the cast as a whole gives you that very motivated, driven type of uh, story. Um, and heartwarming as well to make you want to keep going, right? Now, especially with Michael B. Jordan directing Creed 3 and finishing off the trilogy, uh, you'll definitely want to catch up on the previous two as they're definitely not a slouch of a movie. So if you haven't seen them, definitely watch them. I know I just finished watching the very first Creed as well. I'm on to Creed number two. That way I can go ahead and enjoy Creed 3 as well because I really do need that refresher, unfortunately. Now, for my hidden gem, which you can obviously already see on the screen, is Station Eleven. Guys, when I tell you Station Eleven, this show 
is absolutely spectacular. And I mean that. And I really, really, truly mean it. The show was actually released a little while back in 2021 exclusively on HBO Max and was one of their best shows to date, in my personal opinion. Now, I wanted to shine some light on this show as, of course, not many people had HBO Max uh, a few years back. So this is something you guys will definitely want to check out and you probably most likely missed it as well. This also gives you uh, a Last of Us type of vibe with this post-apocalyptic uh, kind of story. However, the stories of each individual shown uh, and how it all pretty much like intertwines with one another really makes you feel immersed in the show as well. So it's definitely going to be worth your while uh, if that's what you're into. Alrighty, now on to segment number three. Put it on the screen, bam, look at that. Apple Plus, my top five choices. So we're going to kick it off right away with Ted Lasso season two. This season actually came out back in 2021. Ooh, excuse me, guys. 2021. However, with season three right around the corner and releasing on March 15th, I thought it would be a great reminder to everyone to check out the previous season at, as a pretty much as a refresher, right? So if you love comedy and are into sports as well, then this is a great show for you to watch. And also, it's an Emmy-winning comedy show as well, where I believe single-handedly, to be honest, has caused a lot of people to subscribe to Apple TV Plus because specifically of this show. So definitely one to check out, has been doing absolutely spectacular, and I expect to see this on some rising charts once it does release for season three. Now, option number two on Apple TV Plus, I have The Servant seasons one through four. Now, I say seasons one through four because season four is currently out right now and releasing on a weekly basis. Uh, so you can pretty much watch the previous seasons at your own page, binge watch them all just to catch up to season four. And it probably most likely won't even be over at that point because the episodes are fairly short around roughly around 28 to like 35 minutes each episode. So it's really not that bad. Now, the first season originally came out in 2019 where pretty much a couple were mourning the loss of their newborn because of a crazy accident and ultimately opened their doors to a babysitter that brings mayhem from there going forward, guys. So the show is absolutely creepy. It's horror. It's dark. And it'll keep you up and thinking, especially if you're watching this by yourself. So I don't recommend. But this is hands down one of my personal favorites on the streaming platform. So definitely tune into it if you haven't done so already. Now, also for option number three on Apple TV Plus, I have Hello Tomorrow. This show is one heck of a show, guys. And so far, there are only five episodes out, with the fifth one being released. With the fifth one being released today, so. Uh, this does come out on a weekly basis every single Friday as well, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the show was released on February 17th, so it's pretty much new, and it's a sci-fi comedy drama type of show as well. So Billy Crudup is back in action with a spectacular acting, and this setting pretty much takes place in the 1950s with a twist because it is pretty much futuristic at that point too. Um, it does have to do with salesmen, however, there's a lot more to it, so you'll just have to tune in and see exactly what uh, they are even selling because i don't really want to go ahead and give you any spoilers or really ruin the show for you either so tune in watch it and let me know your thoughts down below now for option number four on apple tv plus we have the morning show now another show that came out a while back when apple tv plus was making their mark and this was released back in 2019 however there are two seasons with a third season coming so i wanted to shine some light on it again um, on the show, right? So the show is phenomenal from the cast to the drama to the suspense of it all. Really, really a great show. It really shows the back end behind the morning crews for like those news anchors really high up in the morning, right? Waking up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. But also it shows a different side of them uh, going through those daily struggles that each and every single person does as well uh, and really making it a relatable show to that factor too. And also, with the likes of like Reese Witherspoon, right, Jennifer Aniston, Billy Crudup again, and many more, the show stands out really amongst others. And once season three comes out, I definitely expect this to blow some numbers out the charts for Apple Plus and to really compete with the other streaming platform shows as well. Now, for option number five on Apple TV Plus, we have Blackbird. Now, this is a fairly new on the platform. It was it's uh it was released on July of 2022. Uh, however, this is based actually on a true story. So the main character is actually sentenced to prison. However, ends up cutting a deal with the FBI to enter maximum security for criminally insane people, which is a little bit scary, right guys? So to meet a suspect specifically, that's a serial killer for the deaths of 18 women. 
and trying to pretty much get a confession out of this individual. So the story is super, super suspenseful. It's psychological as well. Uh, however, both Taron Egerton and Paul Hauser do a great job portraying these characters. And also just something to point out, but Ray Liotta, uh, rest in peace to that man, also passed away prior to this show's release. And this is actually Ray Liotta's very last project that he had a chance to actually go ahead and film. So uh, they end up doing a nice, very, very nice tribute, specifically in episode three uh, for Ray Liotta as well. Now, for my hidden gem on Apple TV+, Plus, which I know you can already see on the screen, is Emancipation. Now, I do uh, want to point out many have seen this film already. However, some also have not, and a lot of people have not specifically because of the incident that Will Smith had uh, with Chris Rock. And lots of his fans, lots of his family members, friends, lost a ton of respect for what he did to Chris Rock in, in front of a public setting like that. So a lot of people actually refuse to actually go ahead and support his work. However, uh, this does have to do with slavery as well, but based on a true story and the story as a whole, um, it's extremely disheartening, right? Um, but finishes off great with really giving us like a thrilling kind of story. And I look back at just like cruel times in the past as well, but really brings it all together towards the end for a heartwarming uh, kind of ending to it. So that's definitely, definitely a movie that you'll want to see if you have not seen it. And even, let's say, maybe you don't support uh, Will Smith as a whole, uh, just check out the movie, give it a whirl, and see what you think of it as a whole, right? Because it's not just him in the actual in the actual movie itself. Alrighty, now for segment number four of the streaming platform, guys. We have Disney Plus, my top five. And kicking it off, we have Mandalorian Season 3. Now, Grogu is back, everyone, and so is the Mandalorian, played by no other than Pedro Pascal, as Season 3 was just released this past Wednesday on March 1st of 2023. So, of course, if you're deep into the Star Wars franchise, you have to go ahead and watch this season as episodes do come out weekly, so plenty of time to absolutely go ahead and catch up if you haven't seen the previous seasons. Now, for option number two on Disney+, Plus. I have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Of course, I had to go ahead and include this film on my list. And for the most part, many of you have seen the film already in theaters. However, it did release on Disney Plus on February 1st and has been trending since. So it's definitely an emotional roller coaster of a sequel to the original Black Panther film that focused on Chadwick Boseman and many others. Uh, but the story continues and a great tribute is displayed here to... to uh, Chadwick Boseman himself too, and the sequel does a great job by doing that. Now, option number three for me on Disney+, Plus, which may be a shocker to some of you, is Zootopia. Now, Zootopia actually came out back in 2016. However, with the recent announcement over the uh, recent Disney investments call, uh, Zootopia 2, uh, I figured I would uh, go ahead and shine some light on the very first Zootopia uh, and refresh your memory because you know, it's definitely time to do so with a sequel coming out, right? So I personally had a great time with the film and with the outstanding cast with the likes of Jason Bateman, Idris Elba, right? J.K. Simmons, uh, Jennifer Goodwin, right? And the list goes on and on from there. You're definitely in for a good treat and for a good animated uh, movie at that. Now for my fourth pick, huh? funny enough, look at that, Toy Story 4, right? So for some reason, uh, for the same reason as Zootopia, uh, I had to include this with a recent announcement that Toy Story 5 is coming. And yes, thank you, Tim Allen, for confirming he is back as Buzz Lightyear himself. Apologies, Chris Evans, not throwing any shade at you, sir, but um, Lightyear wasn't exactly our cup of tea, unfortunately. So with the ending of this movie, uh, fan, uh, Toy Story 4, um, being fantastic and so impactful to just adults, children, teenagers of many ages, right? I can only imagine what Toy Story 5 has in store for us and hopefully the story comes out just as good and doesn't tarnish the name or the franchise of Toy Story itself. So more to come on that and hopefully we get some kind of news update on that too. Now, um, Loki, my fifth option. Now, spoiler warning right now. For anyone that has not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, this is your part to go ahead, skip over to the next segment because there will be a spoiler here. Now you've been warned, right? So, spoiler warning, of course, this is on the list, right? So, with the recent release of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, post credit scene, specifically featuring Loki, I figured it will be a great time 
to go backtrack and rewatch this great show that was released on Disney+. Plus. So if you have seen Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, you know at this point that Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson appear at the end um, of the post credit scene. <clears throat> Watching Kane the Conqueror, or I guess you could say Jonathan Majors, uh, playing in an actual play and pointed out that he's actually the bad guy and it pretty much cuts off from there. So just more so for anyone that wants a refresher before season two of Loki that comes out, um, just wanted to point that out for everyone because the season is absolutely phenomenal and I can't wait for season two either to see if it does piggyback off of that post credit scene. Now for my hidden gem, which I know you already pretty much see on my screen, right, is called The Right Stuff. So this is a show that actually came out a while back in 2020. However, again, I feel as though not that many people had Disney Plus at that time, right? Streaming shows are just becoming extremely popular with the pandemic. Uh, this story revolves around U.S. fighter pilots being recruited to be the first men to fly to the moon. And it is actually a TV adaptation of the book called The Right Stuff as well. So it's a great story from so many different character perspectives and so relatable at a real world level. That I think this is great for really any viewer that is into exploration, but also drama. So definitely something worth your while, even if you're not necessarily into the kind of space fanatic kind of situation. Uh, just check it out and see if this is something that, you know, fills your cup of tea. All righty, guys. Thanks so much for sticking, uh, sticking along. So we made it to segment number five. If you're still here, guys. Drop that comment down below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if, uh, you know, I've inspired you guys to watch some new shows, maybe rewatch some shows or movies, um, because I really would love to hear your feedback as this is going to be ever evolving and making updates as the weeks go on as well. So segment number five, we have the Nielsen charts. And for many of you that don't know what the Nielsen charts are, Nielsen charts are providing us the top 10 shows and movies streamed in the United States and they're actually calculating this by the amount of minutes that were watched in millions uh, from the audience themselves. Now, also the Nielsen charts are also delayed a month. So just keep that in mind. So we're not going over Nielsen charts actually from um, February, unfortunately. Those will be coming out soon. Uh, this is actually from January. They're currently working on some new data analytics to try to get the actual um, data out to us much quicker. And hopefully the update is within a couple months, few months as they've been stating. So more to come on that. But Nielsen Charts is definitely super important regardless um, because this is really showing not just me, but the audience and really obviously corporations on what people are watching and what they're interested in, right? So as you guys can see on my screen, we have the top 10 here. First one, you're going to see a lot of Netflix regardless on almost every single month we go over the Nielsen Charts. So you have You the P uh, you People, right? The movie that came out in 2023 on Netflix with Jonah Hill. Uh, we have that ranked as number one. Well, the Nielsen charts do. Rank number two is another Netflix, Ginny and Georgia, right? A great show, mother and daughter kind of situation. We have The Walking Dead, ranked at number three. That 90s show, ranked at number four. And then we have ranked at number five, another Netflix show, Coco Melon. You guys can see a trend here, right? Netflix is really just running the game here. Uh, finally, we have a different competitor, HBO Max, The Last of Us, right? And I ex actually expect us to see uh, see this show be a little bit higher the next time we get an updated uh, Nielsen chart as well. Now at number seven, we have Prime Video Shotgun Wedding, which is the movie with Jennifer Lopez. And then at number eight, Netflix is back in action again with NCIS. And at number nine, HBO Max, familiar face, two times making it to the charts, which is great to see. The Big Bang Theory, absolutely phenomenal show. And then Netflix again uh, at ranked number 10 with Grey's Anatomy. And of course, not necessarily surprised with Grey's Anatomy actually uh, being shown in the top 10, especially with Ellen Pompeo's recent uh, recent departure from the show itself. Probably sparked a lot of buzz and a lot of people to go ahead and watch Grey's Anatomy again or probably the previous season or the, se or the episodes before prior to that departure. So that way they're in the loop and know exactly what's going on. But there you have it, guys. Streaming and chilling with uh, the Cash Critic. What to watch this weekend. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for continuing this journey with me. You can tune into more videos right now. Peace. Uh -huh.